Okay, Quinn. Yes. Hey, uh, first of all, great event. Trails were absolutely awesome. Um, I ride intermediate uh, B, so slowest okay. in the afternoon, but uh, it was absolutely great. Um, just so you know, I did the pro line on my last lap. Oh, nice. So it was pretty cool. But listen, um, you know, you always put on a great event. Thanks. Um, I want to get to the storm in a second, but just, uh, just quickly, uh, tell us a little bit about the property. And I know you've told the story a little bit times. You obviously have tons of trails here. Uh, you're able to turn it around and close trails off and open up other trails and kind of change it from year to year But just a little bit about the property. Yes, the property is uh, 145 acres uh, We have our own private small little lake on here. It's about say yeah, Eight acres on the that's lake. the one everybody goes swimming in after Correct. the race. After yeah the race. Yes, yes. <laughs> And the, yeah. Uh, the the kilometers for the trail is I uh, presently say they rode 13 kilometers Okay, I have about 20 laid out which they don't ride like all the whole 20 right because uh, the lap times will only come to two laps Maybe right. Yeah, so to make it enjoyable for the uh, riders spectators Everyone we try to keep it at four laps Okay, and that way there they can see from all different vantage points as the races are going through they can cheer them on Have a nice day right on um, Yeah, so just quickly I know uh, before each race. Yeah, uh, you know the organizer and I think it's Jill, Jill yep. um, She's been you know pretty upfront about thanking kind of volunteers and yes. everything So we had a big storm come yes, through we've storm. actually had two. Well, we've had two um, Did both of those impact you? Uh, no, the first storm, uh, I was after Gopher Dunes, I came up the night after Gopher Dunes race and the place was just hammered up here, but trees down everywhere. That, we got it all cleaned up and then about two weeks after we had the next big storm that came through Tweed and that Kenilite and Maydock. Okay. We got the tail end of the winds, heavy winds, massive rain and it went by, I say about maybe a mile away from us. Okay. So we survived that. Good. Yeah. Because I remember waking up after the second storm, I didn't get it where I was, but I knew it had been south of me, and I just was crossing my fingers that I wasn't going to see a post that you guys got hit again. Yeah. But the first storm did a lot of damage, right? A lot of damage, yes. Um, pine trees, probably 250 years old, three foot diameters, maybe about 50, 60 of them that we cut through. Wow. Uh, I had some great help from some uh, arborist, couple racers here, arborist, uh, came down from Quebec, uh, Ottawa border side. Wow. And I had probably about 40 volunteers from off-road Ontario. Wow. All come in, they help for weekends, cutting and clearing trails so the race could go on. That is amazing. And so how long about did that take you to do the cleanup? That, the cleaning with all the volunteer help, probably about week and a half okay so week yeah week. that i mean that's a lot of work in that week and a half so yes. it, you know it sounds to those of us who weren't part of the cleanup you know oh, a week and a half but i'm sure that was an intense week and a half of work yes and the mosquitoes and oh, the mosquitoes, mosquitoes and the bugs flies. unreal yeah yes. absolutely okay so uh you know from myself to yourself and to all the volunteers thank you very much because again you. the event was absolutely amazing i don't know how you pulled it off we're happy you pulled it off you know we know there's other events like the rock hound rally that yep, take place coming. local yep. and they're still working on those so the fact that you're able to clean this up and get us out on the track we appreciate it uh and thank you very much quinn for your time you're welcome awesome thanks for coming thanks all right, welcome back YouTube. So here we are at Chloe's Kingdom and we are off. So intermediate B, um, this is just the start. We saw some footage from the drone, a little interview with the property owner and organizer, uh, Quinn. I just want to extend a thank you to Quinn and to all the volunteers that helped make this possible. For those of you who don't know, uh, we experienced quite um, a severe storm uh, with the tornado and funnel clouds and uh, you know, kind of um, you know everything from an extreme perspective that ripped through uh, certain areas of um, Ontario. And Quinn's property was affected, so you heard him there. There's been a lot of work put in to clean it up. Uh, they were able to get the event back on the rails. Uh, and I'm thankful for that because this is my favorite XC race in the Ontario XC series. It's all single track, very technical. Don't let the um, uh, image stabilization of the GoPro fool you. Um, this is an extremely rough and punishing track, especially in the afternoon. After the morning classes um, have tore it all up and exposed uh, root wow. and rock and everything else um, that's underneath that loose dirt. So 
this race for me, um, I was really, really happy uh, with my performance, but more so after Tough Light Roar and trying to um, come up with, you know, a different way um, to think about racing and, uh, you know, to kind of ease the competitive streak that, um, you know, forces me to kind of go all out um, and, you know, become tired and expend a lot of energy. I decided that this race for me was going to be um, a bit of a testing uh, event. So what I wanted to do was just stay calm, keep my head, um, you know, on my shoulders, straight on my shoulders, and focus more on uh, conserving energy, being more efficient, uh, and not allowing the fact that, um, you know, the fact that I'm in a race uh, mess with you know my riding ability or how I ride um, and trying to go faster than I can think. So big success um, in this race. Uh, you can see here, you know, I, I do get stuck behind a couple of riders um, initially. That's my bad for uh, for my start. I wasn't really happy with my start, um, and I mean this is just the nature um, of the racing beast in single track. You get stuck behind somebody. Um, you know, I tried not to get too aggressive with people in this race. I really wanted to enjoy it. I didn't want to get stressed out. Um, I didn't want to get upset or, you know, frustrated. I just wanted to have a good, fun, uh, fun race and finish it strong. That's what I wanted. I wanted consistency. I wanted to, you know, for all my laps to be um, fairly close together because I have a bad habit of putting in, you know, a couple of burner laps and then really dying towards the end of these two, two plus hour races. So anyway, mission accomplished. My laps were uh, much more consistent this go around. Um, a little bit slower than I would have liked, uh, but at the end of the day, you can see here, you know, there's still a few little bottlenecks in the afternoon class, especially in Intermediate B. You know, I think as you move up to Intermediate A and Bed Expert and uh, Expert, you, you get out in front of all this. I think there's, you know, less bottlenecks. Um, I'm sure it still happens, but I just feel like, um, you know, intermediate B, you're still kind of in between, um, you know, rider ability, just a, a little tiny bit. So anyways, uh, no big deal. Uh, I eventually get around the riders I needed to get around, and those riders who, uh, you know, should have gotten around me got around me as well. So I ended up finishing seventh. Um, in my class, in the Intermediate B class, again, this is my first year racing Intermediate B. I'm happy with that. I'm totally okay with this. Um, you know, I, I keep saying it, but I'm going to be in that class uh, sooner rather than later. And I'm just, you know, looking to have some fun and race against uh, some of the youngsters. I mean, there's 15-year-olds in this class. Um, Alex and Nick, big shout out to those guys. They showed up, uh, put in, you know, an amazing effort and finished very, very well um, in front of me. Uh, one of them, uh, you know, achieved the podium. So two brothers, you know, teenagers, um, and these are the, the types of riders that I'm riding against. So um, I'm happy. Top 10 for me is, uh, is really good. Um, if I can finish top 10, you know, all day, every day, I'll be uh, super pumped about it. You know, we'll see what happens in a couple of years uh, when I get the, uh, the vet classes and what class I'll go into. Um, so the track, again, super, super rough. Um, it really was, it became punishing after, you know, the second lap. There, were, there was more than a few riders that actually pulled off, but I mean, um, th this, is, this is the type of track that I prefer. It's just that, you know, there was a lot of rock and a lot of roof that just became more and more exposed as you, uh, you know, as hundreds of riders, uh, you know, plowed through it. Uh, but it was absolutely great. Lots of new riders out at this event. Um, four of my friends who had never raced before or uh, very seldomly uh, came out and they raced. And we had an absolutely great time. A lot of familiar faces. I was really happy about that. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to uh, engage with quite a few people, met some new people, uh, you know, already added to the social media, so, you know, making connections. We were supposed to ride the next day um, with my buddy Morgan, but honestly, after this race, we were all so beat up that we decided uh, maybe we'll take a 24-hour break before we uh, get back on the dirt bike. So, 
listen, if you listen to me talk this far, you know how these videos go. I, I appreciate the support, but in my race videos, I like to provide you with as much of a full lap as I can. Now, what I would say is my GoPro got knocked a couple of times here, so if uh, if I didn't have a good angle, um, I deleted the footage. I didn't want you looking up at the trees, and I certainly didn't want you looking straight down at the bike. You will see um, I have a bit of a whiskey throttle moment um, as I go between uh, two very skinny trees that actually get my handlebar on both sides. I drop the bike, I pick it up, and then my GoPro is kind of whacked for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the video. Uh, but I, I try to salvage as much of the footage as I can. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Um, and, and, you know, leave me a comment. Add me on uh, Instagram. You know, reach out. Uh, I think it's amazing when you get to these races and, uh, you know, you're, you're chatting with uh, people you've just met or you've met a couple of times before. And everybody is, uh, you know, kind of loosely, um, you know, following or tracking what uh, what everybody else is doing. The uh, the scene seems to be growing um, in Ontario, uh, the off road dirt bike scene. So it's a good thing. Um, all of this is uh, is really cool um, to see. You know, promoters and organizers. There's more XCs this year than there were last year. Um, you know, things are starting to come back after COVID. Uh, the scene's growing, you know, lots of people out there buying and riding their bikes, so uh, it's absolutely great. Um, yeah, so until next time, and I will have a, a couple more videos coming up, um, you know, keep the rubber side down as they say, uh, play in the dirt, um, you know, and enjoy the rest of the summer because it's going to be gone before we know it. What the f***? Okay, settle down.
Yeah, man. Compose yourself. You all right?
Spence, Spence, can you grab those? Like blood holes. Why is it so hard today? <laughs> There's a river back there. 